Hey everybody, welcome back to New Videos channel and we have to talk about headings and applications because in one way you want to have all your headings at least follow some kind of structure, have different styles for headings and semantics, but also very often there's something happening that shouldn't coupling. So let's see how to fix that. Some examples of really good headings and varieties and the biggest mistake people usually do. Let's go. A very common issue I see during code review is that people couple their styles and their semantics and very commonly for headings. So let's see a very simple example of what I actually mean here. We have this very simple view as of C playground. The script part is actually empty. In our template, we have hello world. And then we have this part, h1 font size, 60 points. Or like if we have another thing like h2, I don't know, font size, 30 points. And I don't know. Uh, text decor or decoration um, underline whatsoever. So we see like, okay, our H2, if we change that over, then it's underlined a bit smaller. Maybe some of you feel like, wait, I do the same. What's the problem here? And the problem is pretty simple. You couple style and semantics. Now you might think like, wait, but the, the browser is doing the same, right? If you have just a, a blank page, then you also have styles for like, h1, h2, h3, just by default, that, that can't be wrong, right? And to be fair, there are cases where it isn't. And I mean, the browser has them by default because if you don't apply any styling, well, how to differentiate them then, right? So there are also exceptions where it totally makes sense. But if you have like a custom build application, it might not be. Let's have a look at some examples. One good start is the Next.js website because we have an h1 here on a page that has various attributes, various styles, like a very big font size, right? 5XL in, in Tailwind terms. We have font bold, tracking tight, various things, right? And now if you go to a different page, here, for example, is also an H1, but it looks different, right? It's smaller, colors are similar, but still. And now you might think, okay, for this, it's not that big of a change. It's just a landing page, H1, that's fine. You can do it differently. Well, I agree. But how about example from one of the Tailwind UI templates, which is the Radiant template. Here, you have an H2 and H3. And just from a style perspective, you might think like, hey, this, this big heading, this is the H2 and this here is the H3. Though from a semantic point of view, that would be the other way around, right? So if we have a look, then we see, sure, the smaller one here, Outreach, is the H2, because it is hierarchically, well, way more at the top. It's the topic Outreach and then have something related to that. And also in the document, of course, being further down, being part of that outreach uh, cluster and this whole slide here in the topic. So naturally, the H3 would first of all come after the H2, right? We have that hierarchy. And on the other hand, it looks way bigger. So some people might think, okay, if I style all my, my H1s very, very big and then H2s somewhat big, H3 is smaller, then they would just pick this as an H6 or just a P tag and this as the actual H2. And there we kind of have the problem. People get very lazy, like they use divs as buttons because they don't want those default styles or I don't know, divs as links with the same idea. Especially with SPAs, it's very common that like, oh yeah, it's, it's fine. Like I can just have an add click event and then it's all good. I just do a router push or navigate to or whatsoever. Of course, the problem is semantics as an uh, assistive devices can't read the links anymore, can't find them. SEO, horrible. And of course, just pushing tab as a avid keyboard user, like it doesn't work anymore. It's always a pain, especially with like things like forms. Yeah, let's let's not do this. So that, that's of course one thing. And the other thing is, well, you want to have some kind of consistency as mentioned before for your style. So how do you achieve that? Well, let's look into that. Before we do so, I want to show you one more example. And this is the Tailwind Typography plugin, because here it's totally fine. You have a heading, for example, here, right? And this heading has no classes on it, not at all, because there's one big pros class around uh, that whole thing here, right? We have, we go a bit further in, we have this wonderful pros here, and the, there in Tailwind, everything is dealt with. And this heading looks the same as this heading. So as soon as you load like blog posts or uniform content, that's all fine. But very often your application is more than that. Even if we go just to my personal website, for example, 
This is of course an H1 and it's very different to the H1 on other pages, like on articles, for example, on this one, right? Or then blog post and so on, so on, so on. So also in your application, you might have these different type of headings, even though semantically they have the same hierarchy, like this H1 and this H1, or same with Nuxt, etc., etc. So how can we achieve what we want? Well, first of all, we start pretty simple by removing this. And it doesn't matter if you have like an add apply here or just like some custom written CSS. And like as I said, if you use something like Tailwind, use like add apply, don't. Just don't do that. Don't bind your styles to these uh, headings, at least not globally, right? If you do that in a component, that's a total different story, um, especially when it comes to typography, right? So if you have like a component rendering your markdown, rendering your blog content, all good, totally understandable. That's the way. But in like fully global styles, I would really suggest not to go for that. Instead, well, why not change this to things like heading large and maybe heading small. In this case, I just assume you don't use Tailwind. If you use Tailwind, then just think of this as like all the utility classes for it, right? It's a bit easier to explain it. If you know Tailwind, then you know how to transform that uh, than the other way around. So now we have heading large and heading small. Great, cool. But we want to do a few more things with them, right? And here we start with creating our components. Naming that is always a bit difficult. If I, I tend to use it something like typography or headline. We can go with either. I'll probably go with typography in this case and also set up TypeScript here because I want to show a neat trick. And what we want to do is we want to copy these scope styles over because they are for that component. Really, really helpful. So we know exactly where we define the styles for our headings and maybe also, a, I don't know, just text. Uh, and let's just also say like this has just a text decoration underline, for example. And we're good. So if we have these defined, well, we need a few more things because as we said, we want to decouple style and semantics. And for this, we need props, right? We need a way to say, okay, we have these props defined. So whenever we use the typography component, we say what style is it and what semantic. And here we go already. So we have semantics and styles. So for the semantics, we have the tag and this is something. And then we have the variant for the style. And now we might start thinking, okay, what could tag options be in variant options? So of course for a tag, we have like H1, H2, and all the way down to H6, obviously. Then we go with a P and as an escape hatch, I'm not a big fan of that. You can also put in div, but I would probably just stick with H2, H1, up H1, H2, down to H6 and P for the tag version. So we say, okay, this is the semantic of it. And then for the variant, well, that depends. You can even, depending on your application, say, ah, oh, do the same. I just use H1, H2, and P. Then you kind of still have it coupled, but you can decouple it. Another option, of course, just use arbitrary name, like large, small, super large, whatever, or like 3XL. But the problem is with large and small, it's mainly about the size. So you might have to find a good terminology for that. But Either way, like separating that is very important. So let's just stick with large and small for this example. Once again, depends a bit on what kind of application you build, right? You can even say like primary, secondary, normal, weird, what you, you're up to you. But let's go with these. And for the variant, I would probably straight away extract that to like a variant type because this will come in very handy in a second. Let's disable the errors here for now, just because we type these down here. And what we want to do now is we want to apply classes. So like these classes, for example, these here, based on the, the variance, right? So large, small, maybe a text as well. Or we can do like heading large whatsoever. And what we do is if we have this variant passed in, well, then we want to have some kind of computed, right? To so say like variant classes or variant class, depending on if you use Tailwind or not, if you have different classes you compose from, that's all up to you. So let's say we use a computed, right, from view. And here in this computed, we just say, you know what? We just return props.variant, which is the variant. But that's not all because we pass in large, small text. So we need some kind of lookup. And we can create it by having a variant classes um, object here and say, for example, large is heading-large. Now we can say, 
instead of props.variant, we take the variant class, right? So variant classes and pass in props.variant. Wonderful. If you'd have a really strict TS config though, that would already be an error because, well, it doesn't really work out because it could be that variant is not part of the object. So to really make it bulletproof, we just say, okay, you know what? This is a record of a variant and string. And this has another benefit because now TS will complain and say, hey, wait, you're missing the small variant here. So whenever you add a variant, then you would definitely get an error if you don't uh, add it to the vari variant classes. And same for text. So for text, we just don't apply any class and leave it empty. And now we have the variant classes here. As I said, for Tailwind, this would be just something like, yeah, font bold, texts, 5XL, and so on, so on. You, you get the gist. And then we just bind it here to class property, and we're all good. So it is the easiest way to apply these stylings. And you have them all contained. You know that they're in here. Now, the last part that we want to do is actually to apply the tag as well up here. And we do this pretty simply by using uh, not a diff here, but a component colon is and just set this to the tag. So we say, please render uh, an element with exactly the tag. That works with actual view components, of course, but also with, well, native HTML tags. So maybe let's give our heading large uh, also not a red color, because why not? And yeah, I think that should be fine for identifying things. Now let's go to app.view. And in here, we don't use our H2 anymore, right? We just use typography. And of course, we want to import that. And now we're good, almost, because we have to now deliberately say, this is tag, for example, H1, and a variant, which could be large. And then we see, okay, it's large or small, whatever we feel like. So now we have the easy way, <laughs> we've removed the quotes that will also be read, wonderful, um, to decouple your styles from the actual semantics. And depending on how strict you want to be in your team or not, you can even say the tag is optional um, and you can use the defaults or just destructure that to select, okay, by default, the tag should be uh, a P tag. So whenever you don't set it, that's fine. All right. And then we also get the variant. The variant we can also straight away take and destructure and say by default, it's just text, which is empty. Then we don't have to bother with that. Thanks to the prop structuring, this all should be fine. And of course, we also need to make variant optional then if we give it a default value. And then we can go to app view and just remove these. And by default, it will still have something set, even though that's the default and it's nothing. We still have something that's at least a text, right? And a P tag. And in this way, we can contain very nicely the style and also the semantics in the same component, but also uh, split them up have some type safety. So whenever I add another variant, I also make sure that there are classes that I add for that. Uh, and I can also display them very nicely in, for example, a storybook or in a kitchen sink application page, whatever you want. So now it's your turn. What do you think? Do you like that pattern? Do you think it makes sense? Did you know about that like props pattern? Actually also very common for buttons, right? Same idea. You want to split up your variants um, well, they don't have really a style, but there it comes a bit more to like, oh, you have a button that could also be a link. They look the same. Same idea, right? Use component is for um, your next link, easy, or your button. Of course, then the props might be a bit different, but it's the same idea with a little bit more. So let me know, do you use that uh, pattern in your application already? Can you imagine using it? If you have any questions, of course, drop them down below in the comments. I'll go through all of them. I hope you enjoyed it and will apply that in uh, your application, even if it's not Vue.js. I mean, that works with any component-based framework. So I hope you do. Let me know if it works out and what you think about it. And uh, hope to see you soon in the next video or one of the older ones. And also check out uh, the latest Deja Vu episode where uh, CJ from Syntax uh, is our lovely guest. And I talk with him about React versus Vue, how he uh, uses Vue a lot to write uh, side projects and uh, stream help applications about community meetups, conferences and more. So check it out. Until then, uh, see you soon and happy hacking.